Welcome back again to UR Supreme Toys. This time we're going to be looking over the G.I. Joe Ultimates Wave 1 Cobra Bat. This is not the first time we've seen the bat. We had the Comic Con exclusive from last year. So let's go ahead and pop him out. Alright, just like with Cobra Commander, he has his, uh, what is going on? <laughs> if they put the uh, slipcase on upside down, I certainly hope this is a Cobra Bat in here. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, it's got embossed logo and everything's embossed on the front and the sides and the back. And it looks amazing and I love the metallic. So anyway, let's do a slip reveal. And it is the cover bat. <laughs> All right, let's uh, flip him right side up. Here we go, Cobra Bat. There is a lot going on with this guy. Take a look around here. Cobra Bat was a pretty prominent soldier in the show. And they have his little images on the back as well as his bio card. Cobra Bat, Battle Android Trooper. File name classified. Bats are the perfect Cobra Troopers. They never question orders, complain about chow, shirk duty, or surrender. They require no leave time, sick pay, or benefits of any kind, and they are cheap and easy to replace. On the other hand, bats do not react very well to changes in field conditions, nor do they discriminate between targets. They will shoot at anything that moves, be it friend or foe. They also have an unfortunate tendency to burst into flames when hit from behind. Bats are dangerous to everybody. They'll shoot, bayonet, or kick anything in sight. Cobra infantrymen don't like to be on the same battlefield with bats. When a Cobra unit is losing a battle, they will dispense bats into the midst of the firefight in order to evacuate the area easily. Alright. He looks pretty good. Uh, I was really happy with the Comic Con bat. So, I'm hoping he does not disappoint. Okay, this guy's got a lot going on. Paint apps are sloppy. As with Duke and Cobra, some of these paint apps are just really sloppy. That belt buckle looks really bad. There's a lot of paint slop on the edge of these uh, pauldrons. Yeah, you can see where they went back and painted over the yellow with black. The silver parts don't look too bad. This is painted pretty good. Where his grenades are, his little belt. Uh, the feet look pretty good. A little bit of paint rub. But I, ultimately, I think the colors look great. I think the head looks great. He should be taller than, say, the other figures, which he is. As you can see, he's like half an inch taller than Cobra Commander. Head articulation is pretty good on these guys. The shoulder articulation is going to be hindered by this little tampoed Cobra Commander piece. So it's going to go that high. You can go further if you've got it tilted to the back. But it's going to go up under there and probably get scuffed by the edge of that shoulder cut it's got a bicep swivel and an elbow swivel and hinge it's got the swivel and hinge wrist as well as the wrist swivel here where they detach and swap out the other arm is not so bad with being hindered in articulation and it mirrors over to the other side he does have the waist bobble which I kind of wish they would have just kept with everybody as he sort of feels out of place. Of course, they couldn't give him the ab crunch because of this little plastic window. And then he's got this rubber gun holster on the side, which I wish they would have fixed from the previous release. It is glued here and here on the hip, which means the leg articulation is going to be hindered. And over time, however you have imposed the glue or this plastic rubber is probably going to crease and break and it's just going to look bad like if you take his legs out like that it's you know it's just looks bad and it's going to hinder the movement but everything else is pretty good 
He's got a shin twist there, and his knee articulation is not quite 90. Of course, he can't really go quite 90 anyway. Of course, he's a giant robot, and I don't remember them running in the battle. They just sort of like walked menacing, menacingly towards combat. He's got a boot cut and twist, and rocker. And ultimately, he looks great. I think he probably takes the cake with this line so far. Comes with this backpack, which holds his other interchangeable arms. And this will, like the Comic Con version, slip over his shoulders and should clip into these little slots on the side, which I think is a terrible design, but it does its job. I feel like they could have got away with a back peg and just pegged it into the bag. But maybe that was um, part of the license issue with Hasbro. Maybe they told him they couldn't do anything like that. He comes with this extra head with the short circuit attachment glued to his face. Plate, I think it's glued into place. Yep. Can't seem to pull it out. And it's battle damaged. It looks really good. So, I don't know how <laughs> this is going to work because he is on a ball peg. So, I don't know. I'm kind of scared to see. Like, I just can't see the whole neck and... Well, all right, it did. I was pretty sure that the neck was going to pop out first. Uh, there is a particular orientation for the neck. It goes towards the body. So you'd want to have that oriented towards the body. To have it properly aligned. And... That pops right into place. He has, if you pull this little strap back, there's this little notch right there on that plastic window that you can barely grip with your fingernails and pull off. This is so that you can add the little electrical attachment, short circuit attachment to his chest like he's been shot. And that looks great. He also comes with this severed arm which looks cool, but I would have liked them to have had a separate severed arm, which was the opposite, so that you could have the wires and stuff coming out from his wrist and actually be attached. He comes with this third alternate attachment so that you can actually have his head blown clean off, which is pretty cool, but I don't think I'm ever going to use that. I can't imagine... The problem, not just getting that in there, but pulling it back out. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm not going to mess with that. He comes with a little blaster pistol, which looks nice, as well as a big honking blaster rifle, which looks pretty good, too. He comes with this laser blasting hand. He comes with this drilling hand. And he comes with this clamping hand. And these are designed mostly after the vintage toy. And then he has two trigger finger hands as well as two extra fists sort of has like walking towards you menacingly hands so say you've shot him and he's just sort of like short circuiting you can have him walk towards you like a zombie he looks good now these accessories should plug into these little pegs in the back of the backpack they're kind of tight I don't like them I tried using them for the combat and they don't really fit in very well so if you really want them to push down in there you're probably gonna have to heat these extra hands up so that they peg into place but as is they're very tight you can get them in there but it's not fun there you go and then of course you can have this attached to his shoulders like so his trigger fingers. Let's see how this. As with the other figures, his hands are a softer rubber, so it's easy to get these rifles and guns into his hands, which I'm grateful for. Super 7's been notoriously bad about using their accessories with some of their lines, and they've progressively gotten better with each release I've seen so far. So, this gun can also go into this little holster, fits in pretty nicely. There is a small little tiny peg on this thing that should peg into that little hole right there 
and it actually works. <laughs> is it necessary? No, but it actually works. We have our Comic Combat here, the blue and orange. He looks great. I loved this figure. I didn't understand why this guy got released so quickly, and we still had to wait just about another year for the regular version. Other than the forearms, there is not any difference that I can see. The forearms were sculpted specifically for this figure because the comic version, which he's based on, had robotic arms and not the armored arms. Also, the head is different. I'm not sure if the neck mechanism is different. I haven't tried to actually pull the whole neck out on this figure because typically the yeah the whole neck can come out on them so if you wanted you could swap parts and you could have a black cobra bat head on your regular one why you would do that I don't know but all these parts are interchangeable or they should be yep so even though that's the wrong hand as you can see <laughs> They do fit onto the Comic Con Cobra Bat. They don't look too bad. So you can do a lot of mix and matching. I am not sure, like I said, I am not sure of what they had to change with these figures or what delayed them. Perhaps they didn't change anything on the bat other than the, you know, sculpting of the new parts. But these bats are great. Like I said, really only the main real complaint I can come up with are these holsters being glued to the hips. Um, other than that, I think these are perfect figures as they are. They're the best of the line so far, which is a shame. I'm looking forward to the next couple waves that we've already pre-ordered. I'm hoping that the quality improves progressively. The bat is a great example of how these figures should turn out. So, I'm hoping that it just continues to get better. I think this figure is great. It's got me looking forward to other great Cobra figures. Because, to be honest, other than a few of the heroes, which I'm very fond of, like Shipwreck and Lady J and Scarlet, most of my favorite Joe characters are Cobras. So, I'm, all, I'm looking forward to a lot of the army builders. And I uh, hope we get to see some better figures in the next few waves. Hopefully they don't mess them up. Anyway, this has been an unboxing and review of G.I. Joe Ultimate, so Cobra Bat. And I am UR Supreme Toys. Thank you so much for watching.